Thank you very much. So, Don Moore. <coughs> Councilman Don Moore. Thank you. Distinguished panelists um, and uh, members of the Asian Pacific American Commission, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. My name is uh, Saud Anwar. I'm um, a commissioner as well for the Asian Pacific American Affairs Commission of Connecticut. In the past, I have served as the president of the Pakistani American Association of Connecticut and the Pakistani American Public Affairs Committee. By virtue of my responsibilities, I had the opportunity to hear from the community at various levels and also as a commissioner about some of the challenges that the community is face facing. In any society, when an effort is placed on to selectively apply rules and regulations to some, but not all, there's a progressive erosion of the standards within the entire society. The last few years have been difficult for many of the people in this room. When one group's heritage and or faith is used and maligned in a matter of fact manner by certain media outlets, groups and some politicians with no bigger counter voice from the society at large this leads to an alienation and emotional ghettoization and marginalization of the people it is discouraging to see that we as a society who has evolved far more than many if not most other societies now has developed a tendency to allow ourselves to roll back roll back towards the darker days our nation has faced we have learned enough probably, from the days of the Chinese Exclusion Act, the Japanese American internment, and from our previous inexcusable behavior and actions towards the African Americans, the Jews, and the Catholics. Recently, however, we have regressed to the days when society collectively looks the other way, when community members, certain community members are targeted. We as a country, and we as a people, are better than that. I'll repeat this. We as a country and we as people are better than that. We must have a strategy to show the way forward in order to deal with the racism, apathy, and meanness seen more frequently in America. We all must accept a shared responsibility. On the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 tragedy and the upcoming presidential election, there will be yet another coordinated effort to make hate speech the acceptable norm and irresponsibly used callous hate-based sound bites for creating hysteria. There is a need to counter hate speech by media through media, community segments through the entire society, and the politicians through the politicians. While everyone has a right to free speech, if that right is used for hate speech, the society should exercise their right not to listen to it. We must marginalize and make irrelevant those individuals who use hate and fear as their election campaign. We must create greater accountability for those so-called media experts who are monetarily benefiting by propagating fear. Hate speech leads to hate, then it manifests itself in the minds of innocent children in the form of calling names or bullying their fellow students. Similarly, it manifests amongst the violent adults as, the, as hate crimes and nonviolent adults as job discrimination. The government cannot do it alone. One media outlet or community cannot do it alone. It has to be a coordinated, collaborated response from all of us so that we may move forward. We must not allow people to make us into those who we fight. Bin Laden is dead. He has hurt thousands of families when he attacked us. The assault resulted in us allowing ourselves to the fragment to lose our fragment of our core values within our society. His death should serve as an opportunity to resurrect the value, resurrect the values which we, in our moments of fear and anger, have allowed to disintegrate. Trust restoration, resurrecting our values, open communication with unity of purpose in a fair, just manner is the only way forward. We are, after all, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you.